I'm Brian and I'm going to show you how to jack your car up without jacking your car up. The first thing you need to do, if I'm going to jack up the front end of the vehicle, I need to place chocks or an emergency brake or do something to cause the wheels not to move. Now most cars have an emergency brake on the back wheel, but it's best to just chalk the wheels like this anyway if you're going to be picking up just one side. I've had a lot of requests on jacking vehicles up. Um, I did a video on this and the lighting was terrible. It was kind of a quick video. I was doing something else at the same time, um, but I've got a little extra time today. I'm going to show you where to jack a car up and where not to. Um, the principle behind doing this is that you want something strong enough to hold the weight of the vehicle. So you want to look for reinforced things. This is okay to jack by because it's heavy duty and it's metal. Where you see more than two layers of steel, it's okay. So you could do it here. The vehicle's uh, designed to be jacked up by this, by the vehicle's jack. You can see the little arrow indicating where to jack it up by. Um, it's good to have something that's slotted to interface with this pinch weld uh, because it's a lot better, you know, so it doesn't fold it over basically. Uh, if I'm using a flat jack, like a floor jack like this one, or like that one, I'll opt for something heavy duty like this, or where it's multi-layered right here. Um, you can see this is a unibody construction, which means that the frame, you know, you look for a truck frame, you're not going to find it. What you will see is, you see that green dot? Uh, you'll see a unibody where it's a frame uh, built right into the body of the car. So it comes to here, and then down to here. This would be a really good place to put a jack. This would be a good place to put a jack. Um, this is the exhaust. You would crush this if you were to put a jack anywhere on the exhaust. Um, also, this is the gas tank. You don't want to jack the car up by the gas tank. And back here, this is just flimsy body material right here. That wouldn't support the vehicle at all. Uh, this is your spare tire well. This would just crush. This wouldn't hold up very well. Um, so you want to make sure Oh, also on these arms, uh, if you jack a car up by these, it'll destroy your alignment. It'll make the wheel all crooked. These are not very heavy duty. This is only single layered and it's very thin. Um, so you don't want to do that. I want to say it's a radius arm. Uh, but that's for the back of the car. Um, we'll show you where is appropriate and inappropriate for the front here in a minute. There's one more thing. This is the, the trailing axle. Um, this is okay to jack by because it's thick enough so you could put a jack right here and you'd be okay or a jack stand um, if you had to jack by this right here on the other end of the radius arm you could do that but it's just hard to get a jack in there you know you're kind of on a ledge by the time you get it up here it can slip off so that's where to jack on the back of a car um, let's show you on the front so on the same car going down underneath the front, you can see where I chose to lift it. I don't have any jack stands, but I do have two means of support. You need to have some form of redundancy. It improves your statistics significantly. Um, now what I've done is where the subframe, isn't this nice? It's got the aluminum subframe. It helps save on fuel economy and add rigidity. It's a really nice thing to have. But anyway, where the bolt for this goes is right in through here. and It's kind of a round cup. Most subframe equipped front wheel drive vehicles will have this. And that's a perfect place to put the cup of the jack because it's circular. Circular, nuclear. So anyway, nuclear. <laughs> so that's where I like to jack these up from. Now again, you have all of this frame surface. There's a lot more places you can jack a car up from the front. All of this, all the way across here is fine all the way down this side you could jack up any of this this would be a good place and again uh, you can do the pinch welds uh, you get the little scissor jacks and they fit the pinch well let me show you one of those how that interfaces so this is what a scissor jack looks like it sits on the ground like this and you twist it with some type of tool and you see it increases in height you know between the ground and the top. It's got a flat surface but that's going to slip and fall off so that it has a slit or a slot in it. Dirty little slut. Okay I got that out of the way. So anyway that goes onto the pinch weld like that and uh, it's not going to slide or slip or go anywhere. And so that's the way those work. When you look on this 
This one's actually out of a Subaru. But you see it demonstrates where to put it, either on the pinch weld behind the front wheel or in front of the back wheel. So let's take a look back here. And most all cars will be this way. Even though this looks smooth, if you peek underneath, you can see the pinch weld right there. And again, that's where it goes, just right there. You see the little arrow to indicate where that should be. And you saw the other jack stand, how it had a slot that was similar. So if you had to, you could jack up uh, anywhere on here, but where it gets double reinforced, that's preferable to here. You just want a lot of metal so that you have good support. So those are the places in broad daylight. This is a better video than the last one that I did because I'm spending more time and it's specific to uh, just jacking the car up, not just about the fuel filter or anything else like the other video was. So that's how you do it. Um, let's talk about center of mass or center of gravity, whatever you want to call it. The middle point, the tipping point. If you were to put this car up on something as a teeter-totter, um, basically you've got the engine and transmission, rack and pinion, cooling system including the radiator and uh, the air conditioning HVAC system with the condenser. You got a lot of weight up in the front and in the back you've got a spare tire. That's a trailing axle that's really lightweight. So there's not a lot of weight back there. There's a lot of weight in the front. So instead of the tipping point, the teeter-totter point, uh, the center of mass, being here, center of mass would be up and down, so we'll say center of gravity. Um, it's usually right about where your mirror is. You see that little thing on the windshield, that little tab? It's usually right in around there. It's usually like an inch forward or an inch back, unless it's a van, suburban, or a long bed truck, or a extra cab truck, you know, in which case it'll be further back. It's usually about right where the driver is. But anyway, that's about where the tipping point. So if I put a jack right on that point, the car's gonna just lift up just this side. Maybe that's what I want. Maybe I'm doing a rotation from that to that on the back on the tires. And uh, so I'll wanna pick some point on the frame right there and just tip this side up and then tip the other side up. Um, say I wanna lift up the front, then I need to be forward of where that mirror is. So in this case where I wanted to do a video on the front of the car, I just picked a spot like right here. I could have done the pinch weld, that would have been fine. Uh, those same points that we saw on the jack, that's where most vehicle hoists will lift a vehicle. You know, if you have a big lift system, you know, they just uh, have pads that go right into those spots. So if you want to lift the back of the vehicle, all you got to do is be behind that point. So this is clearly behind that point, but you could technically be here and it would jack up the back of the vehicle because we're behind that uh, teeter-totter, that fulcrum point, that balancing point that the car has. So, and how do I know that? <laughs> you used to have to help plot them, you know, before a car goes in to be crashed, you know, you put all the targets and the maps, uh, mapping and everything on it. Uh, you spray the wheels so that, and the tires, so you can see rotation in a high-speed camera. You have to map specifically where that point is. And to do that, you have to weigh the car. You put a scale under each of the wheels and do some math and determine uh, based on there's, this one's heavier, it's a higher number, that one's lower. There's an equation that you can use to measure between those axle points, the center of the axle, to find the exact tipping point, and then you mark it. So anyway, I hope you like this video. Um, this video should be a lot better than my other one. The other one had bad lighting and there was a lot of requests. They're like, I love the concept of this video. This is great material, but I can't see a thing. So hopefully you can see in this video and uh, be sure to rate, comment, click like and all that kind of fun stuff. So we're going to let this one down slowly and come down part way. I got this really high to be able to really show it. So let's go to the other side. We'll let that one down all the way. You notice uh, this one's not rolling, but the other one is rolling. And what's nice is because it's a cup on that part that I showed you, it's not going to go anywhere. Uh, but uh, the bigger the wheels on the jack, the easier it slides. If it won't slide and the car's coming down and it's metal to metal on something smooth, it'll slip and it'll slip off that strong point onto something that's uh, like a floor pan, put a big dent in your floorboard. So you want to make sure that the jack can roll. If you buy a good jack with bigger wheels, um, you're a lot better off. So we'll go ahead and let this down. 
this jack right here came with a really, really shallow pad. And it was so shallow that the teeth where they stick up where I welded bolts to it, the teeth didn't stick up very much at all. I mean, it was just very low rise. So what would happen, I've never really dropped a car, had a problem, or had them slip off with the exception of one time. And that one time when it slipped off, the customer was uh, watching or helping. And so I was a little distracted. Braden, how is it? So I'm so it was like, but it was using this jack on a 97 F-150 and it slipped off of the front rail. You remember on this one it has that bar all the way across the front. Well the Ford two-wheel drive trucks do too. So I was jacking it up by that. The wheels were not rolling. You know I didn't have my floor coated. It wasn't slick yet. And uh, as I was jacking it up it slipped off. It went up through the radiator shroud, busted the radiator fan which was a million years old. It was a 97 and it was all cracked and plastic and junk anyway just just obliterated it had to order a new one in and so you know it's good to have focus it's good to uh, just Arcan I mean they're a good company I got this one at Costco it's Ar Arcan 3.5 ton uh, jack um, it's a great jack but this head is just crap <laughs> this junk so I had to add to it so it's a good thing to be focused my wife bought me this. I, you know, I was heartbroken about it, and it actually happened twice. It happened a second time. Um, same thing. Customers there. If you watch, it costs more than. <laughs> if you don't, if you help, it costs more than you watch. You know, it's good to just be focused when you're me. <laughs> like I said, I've never had a problem, but uh, just kind of funny what distraction can do. Um, he was asking me problems about another car. I like to focus on one car at a time. I find that if I, you know, I'm a real detail person, but multitasking is just, you don't do that if you're me. I don't multitask well. You can do one thing right and do it well at a time. If you're trying to do two or three things or hold, a, hold down a conversation with somebody else about something on a different car, I can talk about the weather and talk about recreation activities and talk about social things and talk about other people. It doesn't matter. I can do that. But if I have to think about one car, that somebody's talking about while I'm working on another car, stuff's gonna go crappy. <laughs> that's what happened, it slipped off. So that's a good thing to be aware of. You know, even though I've been doing this for years and years and years and years, if you're not focused on your task, if you are distracted or whatever, you can drop the car. And you know, if you've got a bunch of gravel, oh, another thing, make sure you're jacking on a hard surface. Um, if you have concrete, you're going to be fine. If you've got dirt, this is going to sink into the dirt. And as it sinks, if it sinks uneven because there's a rock two inches down on here and there's no rocks and gravel under this one, it's going to start to sink and that vehicle is going to start to go forward. And it'll take your jack and make it look like this when it's supposed to look like this. You know, it'll just twist it and just make a big old mess. You can put a piece of plywood, you can put a piece of sheet or plate. You know, like if you have a piece of steel plate like this, that would work fine. Um, but you got to have something down or else it'll be unstable and fall. So this is way more than I thought I was ever going to put into this video. Hope you liked it and uh, thanks for watching. That was awesome. Yep, ADD man.